Hey, hey, everybody. I spent time digging into the source code of the game to answer some general questions regarding loot mechanics. I'll be going over bookcases, bosses, graves, and the epic hero sarcophagus. Stay tuned to find out how and what can be gained from these sources and what is not available in the game. Before we begin, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you aren't already. It really helps the channel. First off, it appears there is a check of your inventory to make sure weapons and equipment are not already in there. So keep that in mind while I discuss these different loot tables. Bosses. Many enemies have a chance to drop either weapon and or jewelry. While there are many different enemy types I could talk about, I'm going to focus on end bosses for each dungeon. The following bosses have a chance to drop a unique piece of equipment you can't obtain anywhere else in the game. Starting off, each of these bosses and all bosses in general have a chance to drop a potion and or scroll upon death. The Apostate, Abomination, and Matriarch from the Catacombs dungeon all have a 5% chance to drop the Occult Cloak. All three of these bosses have identical loot drop functions. For the necromancers out of the crypts, there's a 5% chance to receive the decorated dagger if the boss looks like this, and a 5% chance to drop the necromancer staff if he looks like this. Finally, the sword and shield boss out of the final Manshire dungeon has a 5% chance to drop the crow heater shield. None of the other bosses drop anything remarkable. Graves. Using a post from Reddit by username Spoon for Peace, I'll list out the items and purported odds of getting the items. I reviewed the same functions to make sure what is stated is true. The main difference from their original post is that since the equipment updates, the loot tables have been expanded, so the probability of getting a piece of equipment you want is even less than before. There are functions to determine getting bones and a money sack. I'm skipping these to discuss the final function. It contains four parts and stops once one of them triggers. You have a 40% chance to get one of the following trash items. You have a 10% chance to get a random piece of equipment, which includes any of the items which you might be able to buy from the Osbrook or Manshire blacksmiths. You have a 5% chance after that of getting one of the following weapons, uh, Norse Blade, Barbaric Axe, and Istrian Rumpia, Dwarven Staff, Elven Saber, Nomad Bow, Elven Flail, or Exquisite Tabard, just to name a few. For armor, you have any of the Dwarven Shields, the Elven Kalkin, Elven Garment, or one of the newer amulets. Lastly, if you pass all of these, you have a 1% chance to get one of the following unique pieces of equipment. The Vagabond Knight Armor, the Pig-Faced Bassinet, the Curved Longbow, the Decorated Warhammer, or one of the two new helmets from the equipment update, the Bar Boot and the Sevier. Basically, the odds are overwhelmingly stacked against you if you plan to save scum of the graves. The 1% chance is a bit deceiving in that you must pass the other three loot tables, and even then, if you're wanting any of those six, the chance gets divided by that one in six once you roll that 1%. It's a huge pain to try to save scum graves, and you can end up spending hours, if not days, trying to get any individual piece of equipment. It's really better just to leave it up to the RNG gods to give you one of these. It is important to note that you also have a chance of getting one of the endgame quivers, the eastern quiver, or the re related bolt quiver these are probably the best reason to try to loot graves if you are running a ranged character or if you are just using it as a side piece it is nice to have three to four stacks of arrows with you at any given time in the future these items will be scattered throughout the world map and other regions localized to each race like elves dwarves or the skadians the weapons and armor CSV files in the install folder of the game allude to this by categorizing each piece of equipment as Aldor, 
elven, dwarven, wood folk, or any others. So while it seems cruel to only be able to obtain these items by pure chance at the moment, it's reasonable to assume they will be for sale or available by quest or boss drops in the future. Hero Sarcophagus The Hero Sarcophagus is a rare room that will generate in either of the two crypt dungeons. The room is easily identified because the sarcophagus is much larger than the ones you see strewn around the dungeon. These almost always generate a wraith you must battle before gaining access to the goodies inside. Here's a breakdown of the different items you can expect to obtain. You have a 5% chance to get a diamond or ruby. Another 5% chance to get a piece of jewelry, ring, or necklace. You have a 15% chance to get emerald, sapphire, sea pearl, ruby beads, or exquisite casket. You have a 50% chance to get golden earrings, amethyst, aquamarine, or topaz gems. You have a 100% chance to get either a golden brooch, old or ornate, a graph, golden cup, or silver buckle. You also have a 100% chance to get a random sack of crowns between 25 and 75. The final roll is split between two options. First, there's a 95% chance to get mid-level weapons such as the Bollock, Bastard Sword and Knight Warhammer. These are generally found in Manshire, Manshire and are harder to come by out of Osbrook. If on that roll you land 5% and you can get the Fancy Sword, Decorated Dagger, Orient Staff, Pig Faced Bassinet or Ceremonial Cuirass. Bookcases. There are five different roles that can occur based on the level of dungeon you are currently in. A role is each individual function that runs to determine what loot shows up. The lowest level dungeon results in two roles while the highest dungeon contains all five. This is based off of the minimum and maximum level of the enemies in the dungeon. There is also a bonus 15% chance that the entire process will run twice, meaning that if the dungeon would roll twice, it will or roll two times, it will actually roll four times. So the base rolls will always include the tier one treaties as well as tier two treaties and a scroll. The second roll adds to this by giving you the chance of giving, getting a vivifying essence as well as treaties up to tier 3. The third and fourth rolls contain the tier 4 treaties and this roll can happen as early as the first crypt out of Osbrook. The fourth roll has a chance of dropping Gwinnell's potion, the most powerful consumable in the game. The fifth roll happens regardless and isn't tied to any specific dungeon level and contains any or all of the mentioned items. Without getting too descriptive or convoluted in this section, considering this is probably one of the most complex roles or functions for loot that happens in the game, I'm just going to describe it as there are seven, up to seven different parts per role and the last part, which is going to be the highest, has the chance of overriding any of the earlier ones. Meaning, if you click on the bookcase and you are slated to get a shield treaties part 2, then later on down the function you hit to get the pyromancy treaties 4, you'll end up with the level 4 treaties and not the shield treaties. This also means that you have the chance of getting up to 5 items. In the bookcase and i have seen on discord and other places people say that they have gotten at least three if not four items from a single bookcase the chances are rather low to get all five but it is definitely possible aside from these different parts of the game there are many pieces of equipment that are not obtainable at all these in even include items from the equipment update some of these pieces are the Jousting Cape, Elven Brigandine, Traveling Cloak, Alduinian, Curus, and Boots, just to name a few. It's assumed, as stated before, that these items will be available in coming updates and even the current merchant layouts will change. 
The merchants are currently front loaded with a lot of equipment because there's only one area in the game. When more areas are added, these merchant stocks will go down and a lot of the equipment will be spread among these new areas. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel as I will be following Stone Shard through its development and early access into full release. I post daily Let's Play videos of the game as well as weekly live streams on Sunday evenings. Be sure to join us as we have a lot of fun bantering while everyone watches me die in permadeath. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace! Say, not